Welcome to section four. Here you're going to learn more about the environments in the Puppet Master as well as on the client, which is the same in this case as the Puppet Agent. By the end of the section, you will be able to isolate Puppet code and environment and manage files. Now take a look at this. We have a full slate of subjects here. We will start with using environments on the Puppet Master and then move on to setting the client environment. Now next up, we'll hit the Puppet Search path before moving on to evaluating templates and the basics of using templates. There's still more. Moving on, decoding techniques of templates, and then ERP templates and using file functions. Now finally, we will wrap up with delivering files with Puppet and advanced file functionality with Puppet. So it's a big section to be sure. So let's dig in. Let's start with using environments on the Puppet Master. The environmental setting is configured on the Puppet Master itself. Now by default, environments are disabled. So to use environments, you must edit the config file, in this case, puppet.conf, and create one or more directories. One directory is needed for each of the Puppet environments. In my demonstration, we will explore Puppet environments as far as the Puppet Master is concerned. In this video, I'm gonna talk about Puppet environments. Now most of the time when we develop, we develop in more than one environment. Now it's kind of hard to see when you're testing Puppet or just kind of playing with Puppet because when you're doing that, you're probably only using one environment. But in reality, we all use different environments to do our development. Like for example, we may have a series of computers that are for development. We may have a series of servers that are for QA. And we may have a series of servers that are for user acceptance and then for production. So obviously when we're promoting code, either a configuration or code, we're promoting it usually from a dev machine to a test machine to UAT and then to production. So when we do a configuration, the way we configure these different environments are probably going to be different as far as Puppet's concerned. Meaning that when we have a bunch of dev machines, we may have a specific number of packages that are going to be downloaded and installed on that series of dev machines. And then, you know, once we promote our application from development into test, we probably have the test servers configured a little bit differently. And then the UAT servers, again, configured differently still. So it's important to understand the concept of an environment in Puppet. Now, if we want to get the environment of the Puppet Master, we can just use the environment global variable. So it would be the dollar sign environment and that will get us or set us the environment within Puppet. So basically what we need to do is on the master is we can define in our manifest or any kind of code that we write, we can either get or we could set the environment of our actual configuration that we want to push down as far as we're pushing down the catalog that a Puppet agent. So in this example here, I have an example of some manifest code that we may use to determine exactly which environment that we're using. I have three different nodes here. I have a default node, which I'm including Puppet, and I'm also having a node here that I have node production inherits default. So on line four and five, we have a production node that inherits from the default node. So we have node inheritance, where we have a super class being node default, including Puppet, and then on line four and five, we have the production node that inherits the default node. And on line six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, I have a development node. Now on the development node, I am defining a class puppet and I'm setting my environment or basically an environment variable, or in this case, this would be an attribute for class equal to dev. And then on line 11 and 12, what I'm doing here is I'm just setting the nodes and then the specific paths. Like on line 11, I have the node and I have the path and different folder structure where we could find this environment. So basically, when we start writing Puppet code, this environment is going to roughly translate to the name of a folder. So for example, when we write manifest code, we can have manifest code in a specific environment. And more specifically, if we're doing something like using Hira. In Hira, we have three different layers of configuration. We have the global configuration, we have the environment configuration, and we have the node configuration. 
So what we can do in Hira is just specify the Hira.yaml file in each specific or whatever specific environment that we want to actually perform that configuration. So basically, environments split up how we configure our Puppet agents. Like I mentioned, we don't want to have the same agents constantly being configured the same way because we want them to be configured based on what their environment actually is. So in this video, you learned a little bit about Puppet environments and how the Puppet Master uses the environment variable to configure Puppet agents.